Hello there and welcome to this video which is all about entity relationship modeling. Now, entity relationship modeling is the diagrammatic representation of your database relationships. And why do we use diagrams? Diagrams are easier for people to digest and understand. It's good for non-technical audiences. It can show the relationships clearly of your entire system. So let's have a look then at the different relationships. Students tend to be pretty strong in this area. Now you need to be aware of the different relationships and what to do when you come across these different relationships. So this is only a short video, just introducing the relationships and you'll start building these with a few exam questions a little bit later on down the line. So with entity relationship modeling, we have a one-to-one -one relationship and the plan here is to model the real world environment. So for example, here, one country has one capital city. A capital city has one country connected to it. You can't have any more than that. You can't have multiple countries having multiple capital cities that are the same. For example, these rectangles here represent tables. So this would be my country table. And this would be my capital city table. And you would say, my country ID is France. And this is my primary key. Over here, I've got a capital city, which in its own right is also a primary key. And we would link these two tables together using a foreign key. And remember what a foreign key is? It's a primary key from another table. And it turns out that country ID is the foreign key of the primary key country ID in the country table. And that represents a one-to-one -one relationship. In the next one, we've got a one-to-many. And you start to see here what we call a crow's foot diagram. And that's the reason why, because it looks like a crow's foot. Badly drawn, I know, but you get the point. This is a bird. Oh, look at that. Magic. So, in a one-to-many relationship, one teacher can have many classes. A class is taught by just one teacher. And in our tables, we'd have the following. Here is our teacher table, which has a primary key of teacher ID, and this is our class table, which has a class ID. And for example, my teacher ID might be JBR, teacher ID, the class could be 001, 002, and I might teach both of those classes. And that would mean that one teacher can teach many classes but only one class is taught just by one teacher at one time in the next one we have what we call a many to many relationship and you can see that because we've got many here and many here and this might be denoted as an m to m now many to many relationships can cause issues this is saying that Many students can sit many exams and many exams are sat by many students. So let's break this down. Here are the student IDs, 01, 02 and 02 again. Name, we've got John, Kev and Kev. The exam ID, we've got 110, 110 and 111. Computer science, computer science, maths, 001, 002, 002. Now, the issue that we have here is that in the exam ID table, exam ID 110 is computer science, and that is sat by student 001. This is my foreign key because it's a primary key over in the student table. Exam ID is a foreign key, and exam ID is a primary key in the exam table. So what you've got is you've got tables that have linked themselves together and this is never a good situation. 
So in order to fix this situation, we need to break this down. And the way to do it is if you ever have this relationship going on, you need to create a linking table in between here. So let me show you how to do that. The first step of breaking down a many-to-many -many relationship is to remove the relationship altogether. The second step is to insert a third table, often called the linking table, between the existing two tables. So in this example, we're going to break the relationship in between student and exam. We're then going to create a student exam. And that is normally a contraction of the two names of the tables. So we take the student and we take the exam, we mush it together and contract it, and we have student exam. And then what we do is we add one to many relationships in the following way. So we had a one-to-many relationship going this way and a one-to-many relationship going this way. And that means then this table will have the two foreign keys that will be linked together to create a composite key. So here's our new solution and let's have a look at it in table form. We have student ID this time, which is John and Kev. Then we have our linking table and then we have our exam table. This means that we've got a primary key in this table. We've got a foreign key in this table. We have a foreign key in this table again. And then we have a primary key over in the exam table. And now we don't have this crazy linkage problem going on we have the situation where we will use the linking table to get between the two tables. This is much better. So to recap, we have our relationships. We have a one-to-one -one relationship. We can have a one-to-many. On the flip side of that, one thing I probably didn't mention before is the fact you can have a many-to-one relationship as well and that's just the reverse and then we have our final one which is a many-to-many -many relationship and if we get a many-to-many -many relationship we need to fix the situation and go for our linking table in between which is the contraction of these two and we go for our one-to-many and our many to one relationship. So that's one to many, many to one, many to many. Okay? And that's the basics of entity relationship modeling. Have a look on my YouTube channel for a couple of exam questions on how to enact entity relationship modeling, because there are a few exam questions on it that are wordy questions, and you have to produce the entity relationship model. But in the next video, we are going to look and start to look at the different stages of normalization, and that's converting a flat file database into a relational one. So I'll hope to see you there.